Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I'm a minister. I am in a relationship with a lady that may be a witch. Uh-uh. <laughs> That is the interpretation of that presentation in tongues. <laughs> so a minister is dating a witch. Okay, go on. <laughs> so we are not going to ask how he came about that knowledge. Because that will take us to Unibend. I feel, I feel stuck because she doesn't flame my Christian tendency. Hmm. Breaking up is Add. What do I do? Give your wife the mic. She's the expert on all this. <laughs> Give her the mic. Give her the mic. That's her own calling. She she has a. Most of the iconic um, relationship responses I've I've had in my short window on Facebook came from you. So, go on. Oh my God, praise God. Thank you very much, Papa, yeah. for the opportunity. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is very difficult now. I'm standing in front of my father. Somewhere that dissects scriptures. What do you want to say? Give me praise <laughs> God. All right. Um, now, the first thing is you know. How you know, I don't know. <laughs> but like Papa said, we don't want to go there, right? So let me, let me come from your question. Because if I have to have a one-on-one -on -one with you, I want to say, how do you know? But now, since you know, because you didn't say, I don't, you're not confused. It's very, you are sure that you know. Now, my people perish for lack of knowledge, so you know. Mm. So that's a beautiful one. Now, um, that you know, and that you cannot, you're finding it hard to break up since you already know. It means that, um, it means, praise it, God. It means there might be a generational cause there. <laughs> Because if you say, I mean, if you said you don't, you're finding it hard to break up and you know my people perish for lack of knowledge, but you, you know your problem is not absence of knowledge. Your problem is that you now have fullness of knowledge, but you decide to perish. Of course. <laughs> I didn't want to say that because they will say, my own they had, my own they had. So. Oh my. They, they say, they, the person is in league with Satan to corrupt his destiny. He's, he has been looking for Satan to align with him. So even though he knows that, he said, it hard. Oh. May the Lord help us. <laughs> okay. Next, next question. My mom died. Okay. When she was sick, we prayed and paid much sacrifices so that she will not die. And eventually she died. Okay. What is the Lord teaching me as a believer or teaching us as a believer? Um, there are some things that are superior to prayer. You should have heard this in our teachings now. One of the first things superior to prayer is called the will of God. It is, it is higher than prayer. In fact, prayer is a profitable initiative to the extent to which it is in alignment with what? The will of God. There are some things that are superior to your faith. Faith. Some things are superior to it. One of it is called the will of God. Because the Holy Spirit is not even willing to impart faith into your heart if what you are trusting for is a, in disalignment with his will. Exactly. And so I can sustain a position that is contrary to the will of God and I claim that I'm exercising faith to make that thing happen. That's not how to pray that kind of prayer. 
the way to pray it is keep speaking in tongues. Then God will give you an idea of his will. Whenever situ situations are out of hand, don't claim you know how you should pray. Give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to educate you on the matter. Exactly. So I will not go more than that. I know a young preacher. He used to pray for the sick those days. And then he prayed for one and the person died. And he said the Bible is not true. And that was how he backslid. Till this day. He was not told that there are things that are superior to his prayer and to his faith. Yes, Pastor? Sir, I discovered that my local pastor has affairs with ladies in the church. Okay. It's a discovery. <laughs> yes. Aimasoke <laughs> Kamolo. That's the version of that in tongues. Some things we need to also say the, the tongue aspect to educate the angels around. <laughs> so he discovered, he made it his discovery. Okay. Go Be on. Because two of them, I know so much, two told of, me okay. about their experiences. So two of the victims are people that he knows. How exactly do I handle this? Uh, no, you don't, you, it's not in your place to handle it. But it, it's in your place to exit. Uh, you don't have the authority, the requisite authority to handle it. But you can exit. According to the scriptures, a preacher that is a victim of an immoral lifestyle has lost his ticket to the pulpit. You should stay away from the pulpit because ministry is like transmission. Ministry is like transmission. Um, how many of you know Theophilus Sunday, my friend? Theophilus Sunday is an intercessor. Now, when he comes to the pulpit, he, he will begin to sing something like a song. But the impact of the song he's singing is, is not singing. The impact is that the people will begin to pray. Because what he is releasing into the congregation is the spirit of supplication, not a, 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 a song. Do you understand that? Now, that's how we know what is being ministered. A minister can be speaking English, quoting John chapter 4, but what is transmitting into the congregation is the wisdom and the spirit of, of immorality. You come out of the church and the wisdom to talk to pregnant women, you just have it. That my own, what I like, is, you are not women. The ones that are pregnant and heavy. <laughs> you will know that. Well, may the Lord give you understanding. So you cannot handle the situation, but you can leave the arena of that transmission. May the Lord give you understanding. And if there's any minister that mistakenly is overtaken by an immoral situation, you discipline yourself by staying away from the pulpit. Let it be your own personal decision. Don't tell anybody, oh, but leave the pulpit for six months and then allow other pastors to be ministering while you are sorting yourself with God. Even if, are you there? Don't tell your members, but leave the pulpit. If you know you have a senior person that you can confide in that will not use it as a weapon against you. Go to that person. Because if the person doesn't have the maturity to handle the situation, Satan will operate through the person. And so you can open up the situation to people that are mature enough to handle it. And the person will join you in prayer and defend you. And when the time comes for you to be restored back to ministry, the person can come to you with you to the altar, minister for you as a sign that only you and him know that you are restored. A man that is caught up in sexual sin will have to be restored back to ministry. A lot of people believe that you can hide it, cover up, and intimidate the people 
that I've discovered. You are, you don't, you are not a ministry. You are transmitting immorality as, as an assignment. I've been in the body of Christ for a while and I found out that younger ministers, when they fall into immorality, they are so stubborn, they don't want to follow protocol. Whenever I see that, I dissociate with you quickly. If I give you an opportunity for redemption and you believe that there's something beyond redemption, you will use your life as a specimen. When calabash falls and breaks, it is still useful. They use it to pack debt. So if a minister falls, it's still useful. We will use you as an example to teach others what happens to a man that falls. So whether you are restored or whether you remain in falling state, you are useful to the body of Christ. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Stay away from pulpit, you see. He has poster. Where his hand is, it's like, it's like this. <laughs> and he thinks he's trying to save his ministry. He doesn't know he has lost his license. The status of his heart has been revealed. He's a performer, an entertainer. He's in circus. He's not a minister. He doesn't know the Lord. Now we need to bring all that back to the body of Christ so that we can have authentic, credible ministries. Yes, that we can depend on for the deliverance of our nation. That's where we are. So we can no longer hide the figures. We can no longer hide the truth. We have to come to the platform and say the truth so that Facebook can help us. That's how the renewal will begin to take place. In, somebody say in the congregation, he say, huh, what if you fall? You will wait for the last trump before I fall. The last trumpet. Yes. Last trump. I know the grace that keeps a man from falling. That was my first line of research when I knew I had the calling to be a preacher. Sin is like pregnancy. It follows a gestation period. The gestation period of, of an elephant is 365 days. That means in 365 days, you will not see what is making the stomach big. So God gives you time to repent. When fornication is building in your heart, it has a gestation period. Are you, are you there? <laughs> Enough for you to commit an abortion. You don't, it, it, it won't just come and, Hey, I fell. If, if that's how it happens, people will be falling in the market and in the public places. <laughs> Nobody has ever fallen at Ring Road. See? At Ring Road? No. It means he has some control. He, he chooses the place and prays about the thing before it happens. Yes. So there's a gestation period. The lust has entered your heart. And lust cannot be on your heart and you will not know. Before the lust now grows to a point where it produces sin, you have the opportunity to abort. So I know what I'm talking about. If you are waiting for me, you will wait till the last trump. Are you there? Yes. Thank you, sir. Sir, how can a pastor move his congregation beyond 20 attendants? 20 church attendants? Growth. Church growth. Let me give you this, the principle of growth. Huh? Principle of growth that I learned from the Bible. That principle is called prayer. And they continued steadfastly the apostles' doctrine, breaking up bread, in prayer. Then in the book of Acts chapter 6, he says, when the numbers of the disciples did what? Multiply. How many years of prayer have you invested that you want growth? The prayer you are praying will change you first. It will kill your ambition, kill everything, and then rejuvenate the vision of the Lord Jesus on your heart first. The prayer you are praying will kill fornication, desires to touch, touch woman's breast. All those desires are there. And you want growth so that there will be more customers for breast. Haika <laughs> so Yes. 
So the prayers will change you first before it begins to change the work. In fact, the reason why God gives you the work is so that he can change you. You are a hardened man. So he gives you something that you cannot influence except he's with you. So mm, that's how he can put you in prison and accept and, 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 and change you. So it will take time. In my own experiment, my own practice, my own model, it took us 14 years of desperate intercession to experience a breakthrough. But you say you don't like figures, that it discourages people. So it is withdrawn. That one is withdrawn. 14 years, yes. During the course of these 14 years, some of the disciples I was raising felt I was not going anywhere. Because they felt that I could make myself blow, and I didn't want to make myself blow. It means I couldn't handle greatness. I was doing miracles, but there was no growth. I'd raised a few crippled people, there was no growth. I could pick things, there was no growth. So, so based on their estimation, and they felt 14 years was too long, how long are we going to wait? So they left me, and I released them with joy. Uh, that is, they started living from 10, age, when we were doing that thing for 10 years, 10 to 13. Then in the 14th year, we became global. It took three months for the shift to take place. Three months. Now I don't need an invitation to go anywhere. We go to, we do meetings, we sponsor crusades in nations. That's what I'm saying. From here. Yes, from here, we sponsor crusades in nations. Conferences. So, the meetings that we have scheduled, our own meetings, they are too much that I cannot take invitation. That is that's what I'm saying. If you are seeing me with my brother here, are you following? It is because he's a man of God. That's why I'm here. Because in order for me to be here, we have to cancel something to accommodate this. So it means that this, this meeting is more significant in the heart of God than the one who I would have gone. You get it? So I don't need... There is no platform on that heaven that is an is promotion for me to preach on. Not anymore. Not anymore. The platform that I'll be on is the one God sent me. He might send me an invitation to preach in a meeting to one million people. That is not a guarantee that I will come. I will go and ask God, are you there? And a thousand times I'll ask him, are you there? So those of you that believe in our ministry and all of that, I can't come to the individual churches. So if one, I come to one person, let all of you come so that we can receive an update. That's the only way I can manage it at this level. It took us 14 years for the breakthrough that you speak about. 14 years of holiness, 14 years of prayer. And a time will come where the number of the disciples will multiply. We have been to nations, and as we are arriving, our disciples there will gather in thousands. So they are the ones that we do the meetings, set up things. So we don't need an invitation. If we say, we are coming to Angola, and we put it on Facebook, we are coming to Angola, uh, we will have workforce and people that will do something like this. And all the money. So it happened in three months. So stay. <laughs> stay in the prayer. Stay. It produces results. Prayer guarantees spread. And I can tell you. So anywhere we go, we must start a prayer tower, a prayer hub. The people have to run the team for four years first. Then their heart will be ready to be disciples. Then we we'll begin to teach them kingdom principles. And before you know it, you will see giants will rise that Satan cannot defeat. Okay? Go back to your prayer floor. It might be dusty with dust because you have not been visiting there. Dust it and say, I die here. And I assure you, you will not die. Yeah? 
Everybody that said, if I die, I die. In the Bible, did not die. The one that said, if, if God were to open the window of heaven, shall this things be? He died in the evening. May the Lord help us. Yes, I think we'll take one more and then we'll sing a song. Hi, we are even supposed to sing a song now, you see? Okay, take, take one more, take one more. Please, sir, how do I discover and fulfill my special assignment? Okay, we, we got what, a lot. What does it mean by special? Okay, we got a lot of questions around this. Where um, Now, for, let me, that word special is making me confused. You know why? Whenever, there's one young man the other time uh, in University of Ibadan, he stopped attending lectures that God has given him a special calling, that nobody has fulfilled that kind of calling before. I knew that it was Satan that was talking to him. But he was not aware. He thought it, he was exciting me by all that rubbish. Satan had done over time on, on him. So that, what is special? What are you doing? What calling are you doing that, that Pai did not do? What do you want to do now that Apostle Paul had not done? Are you, are you with me? So remove that special first before we answer the question. Remove the special so that I'll be sure that you are not like that universe of Ibadan. He said, come on to me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. That is Jesus saying. He said, take my yoke upon thee and learn of me. <laughs> you there? Jesus said what? Learn of me. What have you learned of Jesus? What has Jesus taught you? You are talking about special calling. You don't know how this Jesus teaches. You know, I used to watch with people when you do your relationship. I mean, I, mean, I can observe. Trust me. Then I, I want to see if in what you are doing, you learn something from Jesus. Yes, so I followed you guys for long, and it is obvious you learned. That's why you are unique, because you learn something from Jesus. The thing that you learn from Jesus is expressing his originality through your service delivery. You learned. You know the proof that you have learned from Jesus? You are going to be unique, not like a copy. You know, there are people now running business churches. Business. They will go to Finland and attend business school. Come here and make it church pretty. He didn't say learn from Finland. He said learn. So when you look at my ministry... It is not common. Am I saying the truth? The reason what gives it that texture is because I learned from Jesus. Sometimes the Lord Jesus might direct you and say, okay, look at this man's life. As long as he's the one that directed you, you'll be getting the things he's teaching you through his life. I have learned from Jesus. That is what has shaped our family model. That is what has shaped our ministry life. That's what has shaped our convictions. A thousand preachers can be doing something else and not aware they exist. I'm not aware. I will never accept someone to be a friend that I discover he has values contrary to kingdom values. That relationship has ended. That they, if I find it in the night, that night, I will send you a message. You know why? I need to do something to protect my soul. Satan is planning for me. I need to plan for myself. You are the only one that is not planning now. You can keep 419 friends around and you discover that 
me that night. And I will tell you so that you will not be in confusion. So that if you see me around and I pretend as if I didn't see you, you understand the meaning. We were not supposed to meet now. Hey, you don't choke with relationship when you're talking about ministry. Do you realize that you are spending your life, your lifetime with those people? This is not a dress rehearsal. This is real. And you keep arm robbers and keep de deceptive people around? Just learn of me. Learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Then shall thou find rest for your soul. Instead of you to be proclaiming that you have special callings, why not preoccupy yourself with learning from Jesus? Before Jesus was able to trust me with public ministry, I had 12 years of closet time. 12 years of closet time, of Bible study time. Yes, studying the Bible. I started that study from the age of 13. Yes. The first challenge I had when I started studying the Bible is the grace to obey it. I saw many things that were contrary to my life. I would be a liar if I started preaching just because I attended theological school because the things were not in my life. Learn of me. Learn of me, for I am meek, I am lowly in heart, and ye shall find what? Rest for your souls. Can we pray in a moment of time? You don't need to stand up if your sitting position is convenient. Let's just take a walk with Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, I know that I cannot become anything apart from your help, apart from your tutelage, apart from your illumination. I am willing to learn from you to open up my spirit so that you can guide me. I am willing to learn. I am willing to learn. I am willing to learn from you. I am willing to walk with you. I am willing to align with you, oh God. Someone needs to talk to Jesus right now. Someone needs to talk to the Lord right now, right now. Semo rosi sosatemi. I co believe a vamba tala bon sheke, kado masantoria. We want to learn of you. The church is dry of your presence, dry of your wisdom, dry of your ways. So we have come back to source. We want to learn from you. The disciples went to him and said, Teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples. They were willing to learn of him. We want to learn of you. Ziamos kedo mahaita iko benisko felabonde samakuria. Enso samila kaito kobrehede isko fedi mantoria baratos keso sana iko pela. We want to learn of you. By Sosa Makilo Mondeli, we want to learn. We will seek you early in the morning. We will learn to walk in your ways. And I will seek you. In the morning, I will learn to walk in your way. Step by step, you lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. I will seek you 
in the morning I will learn to walk in your way step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days I will seek you in the morning I will learn to walk in your way step by step you lead me I will follow you all of my days I will seek you in the morning I will learn to walk in your way step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days a little history I was a keyboardist that's why I know I know sound that's why I know it <laughs> if this guy comes and plays rubbish I'll, I'll just drive him because I was there I was an usher and a keyboardist. I played for ministers that never knew I existed. Some of them are in my city. They never believe anything will come out of me. But it didn't change anything. I knew that in the kingdom, the way of greatness was service. been a long time but I still remember my calls I can strike them here we were ushers for great crusades then I now entered into intercession those days when Umar Akbar comes to our city we are the ones that we don't attend the crusade we pray pray until the meeting ends from start to finish I got used to operating behind the scene for many years. I was a stammerer, so I was not good on stage. We were content with being in the hiding place. Anything that will not allow me 